side here at Laguna Seca, and uh, our Graham Ledger and Sandra Moss are there. Folks? Well, Joe and Margo, uh, here we are with the fog watch. It <laughs> seems like things are uh, getting a little clearer than they were earlier today. It certainly does, and as we said, more people are trickling on in. It's getting to be a little bit fuller, too. And speaking of people, this would not go off. Uh, at all if it wasn't for the thousands, thousands of volunteers that, that help out uh, with the Mass and just the logistics of the whole papal visit. That's right. Many of these volunteers that are here today have been working on the Pope's visit for over a year. A lot of hard work. And one of the people that we have here today is Sister Nancy Sargent from King City. You can come on over here. And this is a big day for you. How much preparation was involved? There's been months of preparation. And I'm just one of the volunteers. I'm not a coordinator. There's coordinators for each section of volunteers. And I'm a volunteer for uh, one of the chapels. And you're, we're right next to one of the chapel areas here in the field with the people. Now, what will you be doing uh, during the Mass? Our chapel is called a Chapel of Reserve. And after, during the Mass, after communion is distributed, the uh, Eucharist that is still left over will be brought here and the vessels that the Eucharist was put into will be brought to our chapel and kept here on reserve. And then afterwards, um, Eucharist will be brought back to the churches for the people that, that if they're still left over Eucharist, will be brought back to the churches. Now they're expecting to give communion to an awful lot of people in a very short amount of time. How is that supposed to work? Well, there, there's Eucharistic ministers. There's over 500 Eucharistic ministers, not counting the priests, and there'll be a lot of priests too. And they will be brought up to the different stations where the people are seated and uh, shown so that each, the people will be able to receive communion in where they're seated. Now, Sister, what, what does an event like this mean to you? Is this a once-in-a-lifetime event? Yes, it's a once-in-a-lifetime, especially here in... In Monterey, you don't expect the Pope to come here. This, this is a very small diocese, and usually you don't have a, the Pope able to visit us. So it's been a big event and, and overwhelming, really, the preparation and, and exciting. People, most of our staff haven't even um, slept. They've been here all night working, and we've had a lot of youth volunteers that have been here since yesterday and helping people to tell where to go and directing traffic and a big day things seem to be going smoothly for you so far that's right Good thank luck. you sister thank you. and she is right uh, it is somewhat of a surprise to see the pope at a diocese such as this about 700,000 people in the diocese and about uh, 150,000 are catholics so uh, it is quite an honor for monterey that's right a calm crowd here it's not like a rock concert a different kind of crowd things are going well okay back to you joe margo and father joe Graham and uh, Sandra, thank you very much. And we can see, uh, every time we go back to Graham and Sandra, we can see just a little bit more of that hillside. His Holiness John Paul II is the 264th Pope. He uh, took on the papal mantle in 1978 at the age of 58, the youngest Pope in more than a century. Pope John Paul II began his religious career as Carol Wotiwa, the uh, son of a Polish factory.